All right. Well, we're we're here again for what? This is a third segment of our. Yeah. Uh, what are we call, calling this? I think uh, it had said Vinyl Roundtable. Vinyl Roundtable. All right. Well, there now you this go. this time, so recently you... I think if I thought about it more, I could probably come up with something a little something better. better yeah. But that's not bad. Um, so recently you actually got a new turntable. That's right. So this video, the last couple were ones where we were talking about stuff that we just already had. That you had owned for years, right? Etc. Right. So this new video is stuff that you've picked up since we got the record player. That you specifically were seeking out. Yeah, we've got a lot of little record shops in the area. Yep. And it, it's it's a fun hobby, but it's also pretty cool because it's like restoring my old collection. Yeah, and that's what some of the stuff is stuff you used to have or what have you. Right. So the first one. Is, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, this is this is a total surprise to me. So I, I don't right. know what I don't know what these are going to be. I just so we can get that initial reaction. And this is something I picked up for you for Christmas that I found in a little shop. Ah, uh, Christmas. Elvis Costello and the Attractions. Oh, Armed. the Elvis Costello Christmas record. <laughs> Armed Forces. Armed Forces. Probably my, arguably my favorite Elvis Costello. Record, although Me too. my uh, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but my you know initial introduction to Elvis, I think it was Music Plus, yeah, in Costa Mesa, yeah. Music Plus, because that came after Liquor's Pizza. Mm -hmm. Those are the that was the chain at the time. Then it became Music Plus, and as I said before, my uh, favorite thing was to just go down to the record store and find something that no one had heard about. And that place was huge. And that place was big. It had a good inventory. Yeah. But um, I just remember at the time being really desperate for something that spoke to me because I think there was just a lot of... Music wasn't very good then at that point. <laughs> there was a lot of disco and things like that. Yeah. So, um, so I saw, not to get off... Well, I guess it does tie in, but... I saw My Aim is True, yeah. and um, I s they had a sticker on the front of it at the time yeah. that had reviews. Oh, yeah. They call it the hype sticker now. Yeah, but that, that was something new back then. Yeah. And here was this new music coming out, and I think they wanted people to at least check it out. Mm -hmm. I would have probably gotten it anyway. It didn't matter the sticker, but, um, you know, it was all five stars you know, from every critic, you know, took that home and just, when I heard Allison and that yeah. stuff, I just, I said, this is it. This is, this is the real deal. Yep. This is great songwriting. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I love Elvis's voice. Some people don't care for it, but That's true. I, I happen to like it a lot. Me too. And, uh, then when Armed Forces came out, this record, uh, Oliver's Army, That's Accidents Will Happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I think Oliver's Army is my favorite, one of my favorite songs. Yeah, songs and I love Green Shirts, Very Weird, Goon Squad. Oh, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just naming every song every on song. the record, but I, I think it's a classic. Is it a, another produced by Nick Lowe, I think? Good old, good old Nick Lowe. Uh yeah, then that kind of steered me towards guys like Nick Lowe yeah. and those people. So yeah, and That's I think another one we'll talk I think about I sometime. bought not this record, but I bought uh, the Miami is True record the same time I I bought Talking Head seventy seven. Right. Molly wants in on the she want she wants to talk about her favorite. <laughs> well, maybe she records. likes. So the next one I picked up, and this was just recently, at a little shop is the self-titled first Crowded House record. Ah, another really great band, great songwriters. Um, the From Australia. Yep. Oh, I should show it. Um, yeah, and they had, this is a huge record. Yeah. Big, Big radio-friendly hit. hits. hits, but... Um, uh, just well-crafted stuff. Uh, they were. What was the name of the band that they were that they were in? 
Um, I was going to ask you that. We were uh, talking about before. Split ends. Split ends, that's right. As split ends, that was uh, Neil Finn and his brother, and I can't think of his name offhand, but um, they were in Split Ends. That's a good band, too. Yeah. Kind of a new wave-ish, a little bit comedic in some respects. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this was a trio, and they were everywhere on the yeah. radio. You saw, you could, you know... Everyone's heard that one TV song, whether uh, they know it's them or not. It's a... Uh, don't dream it's over. Yeah. Don't dream it's over. Hey now. Yeah. Great song. World where you live. There, there, there. Are three or four, maybe five hits off of this record. So yeah. that was a that was a big one. Yeah. I was happy to find that it was cheap and in good condition. Yeah. And we didn't have it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So then here's here's an interesting one to change gears a little bit from the new wave-ish '80s stuff. <laughs> Same thing. Acquired this around Christmas, obviously, as you'll see. But the repress of a Charlie Brown Christmas and Scaraldi Trio. Well, <laughs> there's something really wrong with you if you don't like this record. Yeah. This has been a staple for our family tradition ever, well, before you were born. Yeah. And uh, we play it to death <clears throat> in the car on CD, you know. And, but uh, now it's nice to have the vinyl. Yep. Uh, and it's a cool uh, green translucent. Oh yeah, version. It's got the green. I don't have it in there, but you'll have to take our word for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ben Scaraldi, drop dead on stage. Yeah, I didn't know that. Doing what he loved. I was him. joking because I thought you were joking. No, he, did. he actually did. Yeah. That's weird. It's kind of like uh, Bing Crosby out on the golf course, you know, playing a round of 18 and just keeling over. Yeah. Doing what he loved I to didn't do. I know that. Wow. What well, can you say? It's a classic. Everybody kind of knows it, I think. Sure. Uh, but what, hearing it in its entirety, like as an album, if anyone hasn't done that yet, like do that. Oh, yeah. Aside from just watching the, the special, which is great. Yeah. But even just putting that on. A great one of the great Christmas. Records. I think this is probably the first thing that we get out when it's Christmas, yeah. when it's you know yeah. a couple weeks or whatever before Christmas, yeah. kind of really uh, ushers in the spirit yeah. of the festivities. And I all. agree. It kind of works anytime. Yeah, I love it. So here's one you picked out pretty recently, and this is something I hadn't actually heard. I've heard some of her other stuff, but I've since heard it and I really liked it. And that's uh, Joni Mitchell, Court and Spark. Gordon Spark, yeah, yeah. Free man in Paris, help me, help me, I'm falling. Da, da, da. Uh, well, and then uh, oh, there's one on here. Am I? Hmm. I thought this one had. What's the? What was it put in a parking lot? But it doesn't. Doesn't matter. It's a great record. Um. Uh, and I don't know what's happening to Joni. I mean, she kind of like got a little bit bitter and decided not to perform anymore. Really? But I don't know if that's changing. Who mm-hmm. knows, you know? Yeah. But everyone who loves her misses her. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, not much more to say about that record except uh, I love that artwork. Me too. All of her album covers are really cool, actually. But I uh, love Joni. That's a good one. 